Today I've been challenged with a semi-impossible task, and that is, can I make a Michelin star quality dinner using a toaster oven? I don't know if I can, but I can tell you one thing, I'm gonna give this everything I have. My friends, there is no time to waste. Now let's go, let's go! I would be lying to you if I said this corn puree isn't one of my absolute favorite things to eat ever. It is honestly divine. You start by simply taking the corn off of the cob and then save those cobs and just throw them into a pot and cover with water. We'll set those over low to medium heat and just let them simmer away for 45 minutes to an hour to get the full extraction from all parts of this corn. Then simply add some butter to a pot and add in all your corn kernels. Hit those with a little bit of salt and let these cook down for about 10, 12 minutes before adding in your corn stock. Let that reduce for around 12 minutes until the liquid is almost completely gone and then add in your cream. All you need to do now is add that into a blender and whack it on high for about one and a half minutes. Our goal with this corn puree is not just the most clean, unbelievable, creamy, buttery corn flavor, but the ultra smooth texture is what we need most. And a great way to do that is by using a chinois strainer. It's a super fine mesh strainer. You will see a lot of these in fancy kitchens. This tool is gonna leave me with the most silky, unbelievable texture. It's like silk sheets for your tongue. Your corn puree is done, my friends. If there's one thing you should try from this video, it's this. Trust me, this is unbelievable if you're a fan of corn. I had to give my three-year-old golden doodle, Ollie, a taste. He was also a big fan of this. Next up, we're turning leeks into hay. Yes, you heard me right. No, it's not actual hay, but does it look like hay? Yeah, it sort of does. And with your leeks, just take off that rooty end as well as some of the tops. Then just slice it in half so you can get these little planks of leek and using a sharp knife, just cut it into really thin julienne strips. So the only way you should be cleaning these is by soaking them in water. It doesn't matter how you cut them. This should always be done. And then I'll just add them into a salad spinner to get off a lot of that initial water. So just give them a few good spins in here, at which point I'll dump them out onto a little tray with paper towel, put a little more paper towel on top in layers and let these dry out even more. And now for the fun part, my friends, that's the frying. And we're gonna do that at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for three or four minutes or until they're lightly golden brown. Drain them off onto some paper towel and hit them immediately with a little bit of salt for that finishing touch. The next fancy item on our list is gonna be a basil and garlic oil. And I want this to be bright, vivid, vibrant green. I'm gonna show you how to do it. You start by picking basil off of the stem and then blanching it in boiling water for about one minute. Then you simply just shock that in ice water and that's gonna lock in the most amazing color. Before proceeding with making this oil, you need to get as much water as possible out of the basil. And you do that by just rolling it in some paper towel and squeezing it out as well as you can. Change that out a few times. It's important that this is dry. I'll then add this to a blender with a little bit of garlic and a bunch of neutral oil and blend it on high speed for one minute. When you're using these high powered blenders, they can actually heat up your oil, which will kill the color. So as soon as this is done blending, get it into a little ice bath like this. Let that chill for about 30 minutes and you'll see the color will get even more vibrant as it rests. Here we go, last component of our dish and this one's easy. I'm just taking some chorizo and I found the reddest chorizo I could and I'm cooking that over low heat in a pot and just smashing it to try to extract as much oil as possible. And after 15 minutes, all I'm gonna do now is again, push it through the chinois to get out all the little bits of meat, but save the meat, there's nothing wrong with it. And you're left with the most amazing red oil. It's like a lava juice. And here I have the Toshiba toaster oven. I will be making this Michelin star chicken dish out of. It's all gonna be done in here. It's a great toaster oven with a lot of different programmed functions for all your favorite foods. And personally, I love appliances that are easy to use. And this one definitely is with just its three different knobs of function, temperature, and time. But most importantly, let's talk about the rotisserie function because that is obviously what I'm most excited about with this toaster oven. Here you have the rotisserie fork that's very easy to adjust. You just unscrew and screw in these knobs depending on the size of the piece of food or chicken that you are using. And that simply just slides into the toaster oven. You then use the function knob to navigate to the rotisserie setting, set your time, set your temperature, and away you go. You can see how it's working here with the top lighting up. It's got those protective grates over the heating element as well so you don't smoke up your kitchen. It also comes with this rotisserie kit so when you need to get some hot food out of the oven, you grab it like this and just pull it out. And it's certainly an important part of this rotisserie kit. Now, without any further ado, let's cook our little chicken. I'm using a Cornish hen today and I'm definitely gonna truss it so it cooks evenly. You do this by making a figure eight pattern first just around the little feet of the chicken, then holding the bird upright and wrapping around the wings and tying it up nicely at the top. Use a double knot here to make sure it stays really nice and tight. Trim off any excess string that you won't need and your bird is ready to go. All I'm gonna do now is spray it down with a little neutral oil and hit it with my famous rosemary salt. If you know, you know. The recipe for everything you see in this video will be down in the description as well as the rosemary salt if you wanna try that out. 
All we need to do now is put our rotisserie fork into the chicken with one of the sides detached. Slide on the other side, make sure it's nice and tight, and then tighten up those clamps. And into the Toshiba toaster oven it goes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40-45 minutes. So one thing I personally love about toaster ovens is just speedy cooking times. They heat up much, much faster than your standard oven will. And so with this Toshiba toaster oven, you reduce your cooking time by up to 33%. With a 1700 watt powerful output, the infrared heating technology gives you amazing performance every single time. After about 20 minutes of cooking, I noticed my wing tips were starting to get a little too dark. So all I did was cover those with aluminum foil so they won't brown any further. And after my 45 minutes was up, I went ahead and used that rotisserie kit to get out my chicken. And here we go, look at that. First, take off the butcher's twine you used to truss the chicken, and then we'll start breaking down this bird. I always take off the wings first, followed shortly thereafter by the legs, and then we'll go ahead and remove the breasts one by one to break down our whole little Cornish hen. The breasts I'll slice into nice thick pieces. I don't want to slice it too thin or it's going to cool down really quickly. And now we have it all broken down into its sections. The last thing we need to do is separate the drum from the thigh just by finding that joint in between and slicing through. To keep my plating really nice and concise today, I'm going to add all my different components to squeeze bottles so I can make this easy for myself. And my plan here is to make three rings, first starting with the corn puree. Next, I'll take my basil and garlic oil that's been sitting in the fridge now for about an hour. It's really vibrant green. I'm just going to fill that inner ring in between the first layers of corn puree. Next, I'm using my chorizo oil and I'm putting that all in the outer ring to give me this almost target-like look. And then finally, we'll make a nest of our leek hay right in the middle of our rings and plate our chicken all around that. And happy days, my friends. That looks tasty to me. Okay, coming in for a taste. I love the way it looks. Honestly, it looks nice. Well, here we go. Chicken feels really tender. I'm gonna drag it through all the sauce. Mm. Mm. Did it, man. I don't know if we can get a Michelin star, it's not for me to say, but it's pretty darn good. It's just good food. Well, my friends, it must be a Michelin star meal because I finished the entire thing and now I really want a burger. And that's exactly how you should feel after eating Michelin star food. You enjoy it while it lasts and then you're really hungry. So if you've ever been to a Michelin star restaurant, I think you know what I mean. Until next time, you know I love you in a mouth.